Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with... Carl Nebleus uh, of Death in Space. And uh, Christian Plugfors uh, of Death in Space, the creator. And today we're going to talk about Death in Space, a science fiction role-playing game that's about 128 pages. I love the, the theme. It's not just science fiction. It's almost like, um, so it's almost like survival science fiction. Uh, am, am I correct? Yeah, I would say. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's mainly... Um survival at least uh, and less monster and uh, horror but uh, yeah we're, we're leaning on that side at least yeah surviving mm. in in space but maybe not survival in the like post-apocalyptic uh, sense i mean not uh, yeah maybe not like that there's some kind of society and you know so if, if i may ask where did the idea for this uh, come from i think it's it started all in the beginning uh, with a uh, like um exercise of writing for me at least uh long, like three years ago um and uh i said to myself that i need to write 40 minutes every day uh even if i don't want to <laughs> and then um then i started writing and after a while it the the shape of uh, the beginning of death in space kind of get got created um and uh, after a while kalle jumped on board uh, we talked about uh, all the movies and music we liked and uh, then we started to kind of move away from my first draft there was 80 pages <laughs> uh, yeah so that's kind of where it started from the beginning but uh, you could say that the real death in space started when Kali joined uh, everything or don't you yeah agree? <laughs> yeah sure i think there's still some uh, something left of the core that you started on the a commuter train uh, uh, commuting to work but uh, sure I think uh, maybe we both kind of uh, creatively got started uh, when we started talking a bit more yeah because the first part was uh, I wrote those 80 pages on the mobile phone <laughs> on the mobile, <laughs> so just kind of yeah before we talk about what's inside the book I, one thing that really stands out to me is the the, the art style of this book is very minimal in a sense. Uh, would you like to talk about the art direction? It, it was from uh, also from the beginning when um, the first time I saw Traveler, the cover, uh, and I didn't open the book. I just looked at the cover. So it's kind of started off just the, that black cover with Traveler with a red text. Um, and um, the art in the, in the book is kind of uh, symbolizing how we want the game to feel and uh, the the kind of the loneliness in space and uh, the the despair or all that thing. So we want something that is a bit uh, not old school but a bit retro and a bit um, uh, few colors and a very high contrast. Uh, something that sparks imagination instead of giving you all the answers. Uh, that was quite important for us uh, that you always have question when you look at something and get inspired um, so that's the main thing for our art in the book yeah yeah definitely i mean i, I i'm not the, the head person of the, the the art and layout i mean that's christian but sure i i feel the same definitely hmm. and, uh, and 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 we made the book in three years, cause, so you, you have time to move around stuff <laughs> forever and change stuff. <laughs> uh. Well, I, I will tell you right now, the, my one of my favorite things about this book is the easiness of it. I mean, it's it's you could just really create a character probably within five minutes. It's it's all you could do it randomly with charts, which I love. It's a, it's a game where I, I could take to a con. And I was like, okay, everyone, uh, get some dice, roll real fast. In five minutes, we can have a a set of characters ready was, was was that the the goal for this book for like like for quick quick gaming yeah or maybe not quick uh, i mean sure quick as well but uh, easy and you know simple and um uh, yeah just as you say an easiness to just getting started quickly and not focusing too much on uh, having to flip pages to check this and that rule and going back and forth and uh you know, not having to spend the entire evening on creating characters, but rather 
uh, quickly generating, as you say, a set of characters, getting started, and you know, who are they? Uh, what do the players think when they get all these uh, uh, table results uh, from these various random tables? What do they start thinking about? How do they interpret the table results? Uh, how does that kind of influence your view of the setting? And yeah, just quickly getting started and uh, getting creative and together kind of forming the setting. And, and we started with quite a lot of uh, rules and uh, a bit more uh, meat on the bone. <laughs> uh, and, then we st- and then we started cutting. Uh, <laughs> we wanted everything to fit. Everything that is in the book should be a part of the story and the setting. Mm-hmm. Um, and this should be a reason why the rule or uh, everything is in there. So uh, that's why I guess it's quite simple because we we have started to remove stuff that do we need this or do the, do the game kind of um, not does it work if we remove this? Is it important? So and after a while you have that that core. <laughs> <laughs> I also really like your setting. Uh, I like the what you wrote for the Tenebris system uh, and the section about cults and, of course, probably my favorite, the, the ring. Um, but for those that are just hearing this for the first time, do you mind talking about your setting some more? Sure. Uh, I could say something and uh, Christian can fill in. So uh, the Tenebris system is kind of a stellar system uh, in the aftermath of a war. Uh, so there was a war that was kind of the culmination of a sort of a gold rush, but instead of gold, it, the, the rush was for a, a kind of valuable form of gem um, uh, sought after by big corporations. Uh, and that was uh, uh, up until about 10 years ago when the war ended. Uh, but this war kind of shattered all the supply chains and people are now struggling to get by and kind of rebuild their lives in this broken system. And uh, since all of this... Uh, uh, supply chains and manufacturing uh, stopped uh, with the war. Most objects are kind of put together from uh, old or broken stuff and nothing is new. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's the the, the basics. And, uh, you know, in the background, some people are kind of whispering that uh, the universe is, is actually ending. There's uh, some people saying that uh, the expansion has stopped and kind of uh, reversed and is uh, slowly uh, imploding in uh, in something that will be the end of this uh, universe. Uh, and there's uh, some weird void in in there in the mix that kind of maybe is connected, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, yeah. So that's oh. the basic. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did I miss anything? <laughs> well, the ring, maybe, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, sure. No. Everything that's was true. kind of everything was based around a a, a moon where the, most of the uh, games was kind of uh, located, and um, so the war kind of started around that moon, and that's the reason. Also, you have that ring that's going around. I'm um, like a we call it the iron ring. It's not a solid ring around the moon, but it's like a a band or a, a, yeah, a ring, <laughs> a belt around the, the the moon with lots of debris that's connected and sometimes not connected. And uh, it's just like, a, they are kind of collected all the, all the um, stuff that's floating around in space after the war uh, to have something that's a bit more safe and easier to, to handle. Uh, and some, somewhere you can live. So that's our kind of starting point in the, in the game. Uh, the most kind of important point in our, uh, in our system, Tenebris. Hmm. I know I mentioned a bit about like the, the, the easiness of the, the system. Uh, I, was, I was wondering if you could uh, help uh, explain a little bit to our viewers what I mean by that. Uh, and I, I do really like void points. I just like the idea of like something that looks like it could help you and you could use it if you wish, but if you fail at that as well, there's consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sorry, I don't want to talk over you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 were your, what would you like to share about the rules? Uh, right, I can start with just the, the basic. So, so the basic uh, rule, I guess, for uh, actually trying to do something uh, risky is uh, an ability check. And that's... Uh, Similar, if you come from the D&D world, you're going to recognize this. It's a D20 roll and you add an ability modifier, uh, which is plus minus a few. 
and you want to hit 12 or more and that's kind of a successful check uh, so that's the very basics and then uh, as you say we have these uh, void points that you get when you fail a, a check you you uh, kind of gather the, uh, up these void points and you can spend the void point uh, on your roll to to actually roll with advantage so to get a benefit on the roll but then as you say if you actually fail that roll where you spent the void point uh, you actually gain a form of a corruption a, a kind of a, a corruption of your of your body uh, or, or of your mind um, and you can use the void points for um, for uh... Uh, cosmic mutations exactly another uh, form of a uh, bodily uh, aspect of the void and yeah. those rules kind of came from uh, playing a lot of um, free league games uh, uh, like mutant year mutant year zero, year zero yeah mm -hmm. uh, they have the same kind of you you push the dice uh, and um, so we kind of took that and made it a bit simpler. Uh, I think Corollis also had the same thing uh, that you get. I can't remember the names of it, but like Dark Push. Uh, it's called... Uh, ah, okay. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Or something. I can't remember the name for it. But, uh, and um, we both are fans of... Um, if you fail, uh, you, you can do better next time. <laughs> or get something yeah. that uh, kind of balance up the, all the fails. Because sometimes you have really bad luck. Uh, yeah. the whole night um, so I guess the idea is kind of a dramatic arc where you, uh, if you fail a lot you still get to come back you know, with full force and uh, uh, actually do better uh, by using these void points that you have collected and I guess, I guess the reason it's simple is because uh, it's kind of the rules are is a mix of how uh, me and Kalle like to play uh, mm. so we, we kind of just in a way took the best stuff from our own tables and put into game mm. uh, all our house rules <laughs> <laughs> i i also really like like the the, the 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 rules for creating like your own vessels uh, mm. or, or or hubs um I, I i find that some some science fiction rpgs that 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 part of the process uh with like with space combat and things like that tend to be very um, uh, complicated, but I was mm. very pleased to see how easy it is uh, um, uh, to 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 uh, just create something. Um, uh, is there anything that I missed that you want to add to that about it? <laughs> I, I guess the, we wanted it to be fast when you create. After you create your character, you kind of want to start playing. Uh, but that's kind of the reason we have uh, the hub creation is is a bit smaller but uh, the main part of the creation of the hub is not in the beginning it's while you're playing the game uh, you can add modules and you you will starting to have a connection to the uh, to the actual the hub uh, spaceship or station you get some kind of um, emotional connection to it mm -hmm. so in the beginning you kind of don't care much of it so it, the details can be i mean not that many uh, you just need a something that sparks that mm. kind of imagine of uh, imaginary, not the imaginary, but spark something um, that you, uh, yeah, uh, mm. something. <laughs> yeah, just something to start with, and then uh, over as you play, uh, the idea is that you you kind of develop a uh, more of a connection to this uh, spaceship mm. or a station by kind of uh, you know modifying and uh, developing more and more details, and uh, yeah using it in, in play, of course. Is there anything more about this book that I didn't ask you about that you wanted to share? We are kind of surprised right now that uh, people actually <laughs> uh, understand what we want with the book. Because uh, hmm. sometimes it feels so, we're sitting in a uh, like a quite detailed level, just adding, changing words. And uh, so you don't, sometimes you don't see the whole picture, but it seems like, hmm. um, Many people have seen, kind of not seen, but um, they understand what we want to do with the book. So I'm, mm. I'm super surprised about that. Um, it, it's something we wanted, but uh, I'm, I'm happy that people actually uh, yeah. can see what we wanted with the book. Uh, it's of course uh, hard when you when you're in in your bubble uh, and you don't really know what everyone else outside your bubble actually thinks about 
whatever you have created. Mm. Yeah, mm. and the and the project in itself is quite personal because I mean, uh, because of the pandemic, we're been uh, sitting kind of alone in in two years, <laughs> just mm. writing and uh, on the book and uh, mm. uh, talking to each other uh, about uh, what we want to do. So uh, I can I, I guess the you can see parts of the uh, of, of the pandemic in the book. I guess it's. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but it, it, it's. It, I guess it's. It's there at least. The the loneliness and the, the everything in chaos and they, all you have is your family, hmm. uh, and that's something we wanted to be a part, a big part of the of the of the book. Hmm. That you can trust. You can't trust anyone, but you can trust your crew. <laughs> so, what is next? Are you is is this going to be just a standalone book? Do you plan to have other source books in the future? What what's your plans? Uh, after this is released for Death in Space? Uh, right now we have um, a couple of things uh, that we're working on. Uh, but it, we will start with some small stuff and mm-hmm. kind of wait for what people want to see. Uh, uh, we have some pamphlets and uh, an adventure module that we're working mm-hmm. on. Um, yeah. I think we're both like creating adventure modules to just kind of expand the setting and... Uh, yeah, I know for me, when I uh, GM, I, I really like to have uh, adventure modules to use. Um, mm. So yeah, that's, and we'll see. Maybe we'll make some uh, some kind of tools, uh, generators and, and such uh, to start with as well. Yeah, we, we had a lot of things that we removed from the book that would be nice mm. to add, add some in our adventures and mm. other stuff. And yeah. we had... Uh, we had... Um, like uh, tables, how you create your own systems. Uh, yeah, star systems, right? Yeah, star yeah. systems. Yeah, so uh, that would be nice to get in again uh, somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and, we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see. There's uh, we. Have, I mean, we in a way we made the whole game uh, so we can make cool stuff for it, <laughs> and that other people can make cool stuff for it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's why uh, all planets have something that we like. That we can mm. kind of start building on, mm. and hopefully more people like. Yeah, I have uh, like loads of ideas. The, the hard thing is to actually finish your ideas. Uh, yeah, yeah, as we all know, probably. Mm. All right, excellent. So, the depth in space. Uh, the PDF is out now, and uh, the printed mm. copy will be out uh, very shortly. It's kind of out. Um, it's uh, we have some delays in North America with the shipping. But uh, you can pre-order or even order the book right now, uh, actually, from, uh, for example, the Free League webshop. Um, and you will get the PDF uh, when, you, when you buy yes. the physical book, you will get the PDF also. Mm. Uh, and we also have uh, like um, online tools uh, that's, uh, that some people miss. Uh, and we have content on our homepage. Right. Yeah, that's maybe something to, to highlight, this uh, character generator uh, online. Oh. Which is, uh, wish we had uh, as a stretch goal in the Kickstarter campaign. So uh, Carl Dried, who also has made uh, generators, uh, web generators for uh, Mercury, he uh, helped us make this one. So it, it looks really, really nice actually. Oh, and it's it? uh, you know an even faster way of creating characters than yeah. what you described <laughs> earlier. It's uh, <laughs> literally a click of a, a button. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Uh, and a soundtrack. Uh, yeah, and, and a soundtrack. So- yeah, and something that we'll release sooner. Uh, he's working on it right now, but we're going to release uh, another album with ambient uh, sounds from the planets. Yes, uh, exactly. Like so uh, you, you can use uh, as background. When you're yeah, so e- e- yeah, so each planet will have a sound that you can listen to and loop when you're playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and, and where's the site? Is it depthinspace.com or? Yeah. The soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, you can find it in most streaming services, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, and the homepage is deathinspace.com. Okay. The homepage, yeah, this, okay, yeah. yeah, that's true. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you both very much for taking the time to talk to us about this great book. Um, I'm excited to, to run this. Um, and uh, everyone out there, thank you for watching. Stay safe, <laughs> be careful out there, take care. Mm-hmm.